Good evening, everyone. Ed Coyle along with Ken Chase to describe the action tonight. Should be a good one. The Wildcats and the Warriors, both teams very impressive in week number one. They come into the game 1-0. and As you said, Ed, both teams coming off a big victory, but I think this is the proving ground. This is going to determine as to who could potentially go into a championship game. As we know, West Genesee beat this team last year, and Liverpool's looking for revenge. So it should be an interesting contest, along with the fact that Hurricane Hugo could be showing his face with some sheets of rain. So let's see what happens. West Genesee, an eight-game unbeaten streak. Liverpool will try to snap that. We'll hear from the coaches in a moment. You're watching New Channel Sports on Cable 13. Onondaga Sports Medicine and Rehabilitation Center is dedicated to the safe and speedy recovery of all athletes from a sports-related injury. Our staff of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists specialize in the evaluation and treatment of athletic injuries and orthopedic conditions. Our facility is outfitted with the latest and most advanced therapeutic and conditioning equipment. If you've been sidelined by an athletic injury and you're serious about returning to an active lifestyle, take advantage of Onondaga Sports Medicine. Executive Director, Don Lowe. When friends don't stop friends from drinking and driving. Friends die from drinking and driving. Friends die from drinking and drinking and driving can kill a friendship. I'm here with Coach Carruthers of West Genesee. Coach, this I said in the pregame that this was kind of a proving ground right here. Uh, Liverpool's looking to perhaps have a little revenge, and this could be a very big game as far as the outcome of the rest of the season. Your feelings? Well, you know, every game's a big game at this uh, this level. And then in Division AA, uh, every team wants to win. Every team has to win every week because you never know what's going to happen uh, later on. Uh, as far as the revenge factor, I don't know if it's revenge. I think you've got two good teams here that want to play each other. And uh, I'm sure you're going to see a good game today. Okay, thanks a lot, Coach. Coach, I'd like to talk about some of your key players. Uh, first of all, we got David Schneid. Well, David uh, was a starter last year at guard, and this year he goes both ways at guard and outside linebacker. Uh, he's a senior. He's the captain of our team. Uh, without a doubt, he's, uh, he's an excellent leader. He's an excellent football player. Okay, and how about Jim Kelsey? Now, Jim Kelsey, again, he started guard last year. He had to move to tackle this year, and he plays defensive end when we're on the defense. Um, you, you can't say enough about him. He's a rangy, skinny little kid, but uh, he gets the job done. I really like him a lot. And let's talk about another two-way starter, Bill Chris. So Billy Chris has been with us since he's been a sophomore. He's a tough kid. He's our fullback. Uh, last year he played tailback a little bit, and he plays defense. So he goes both ways. Uh, again, he's a tough kid, and again, he's our co-captain. Okay, and another one of your co-captains, Rob Manipal. Well, Rob Manipal was a starting guard last year, and now he's a middle linebacker. And he, we try to keep him going one way because he's responsible for most of the defense. He makes the defensive calls. And he has to recognize the defensive sets, and he's responsible to make most of the tackles. Coach, thanks a lot for your time. Good luck tonight. Thank you very much. We'll be right back after this message with Ed and with the coach of Liverpool, George Magic Harrell. Longevity is an incredible gift one that some don't get to enjoy. In upstate New York alone, more than 3,000 kids have cancer, and 195 new cases will be diagnosed this year. Childhood cancer is the number one killer of our kids. One day there'll be a cure, but until then, Camp Good Days and Special Times improves the quality of life for kids with cancer and their families. 315-426-0736. Camp Good Days and Special Times, year round. When Fran fell, he called for help. But the only ones there were ignorance, incompetence, indifference. Fran called for help again. Confusion came instead. At last, help came. Help knew what to do. In times of emergency, are you help? Learn Red Cross First Aid. Where you work, or call your local chapter. 
Yeah. We're talking with Liverpool coach George Mangiacaro, and George, you come off a big win against Nottingham last week. Well, we were happy with the way we played. I think we need to improve on our offensive line a little bit and catching the ball on special teams, but basically we're happy anytime we win a game. What can you tell us about going into tonight? Well, West Tennessee presents a real good test for us. They have four or five starters back from last year's Section 3 champions. They're a very quick team, very aggressive team, and in the 10 years that I've been here, we've always struggled with West Tennessee, so it's a key ball game for us. Let's talk about some key players in first year quarterback Matt McPhee. Matt uh, is a steady ball player for us. Uh, we didn't throw the ball very well last week. I don't know with the win tonight. We may not have thrown it all, but uh, he's a very heady player. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and it's the kind of player we need at the quarterback for a wishbone team. In the backfield, Brian Bayless. Brian Bayless is going to have a great year for us. Uh, he didn't gain a whole lot of yardage last year, but he's he's our key man, we think, because he's a two-way player, and uh, I expect big things out of him for the rest of the season. Blocking uh, will be coming from Stan Howard, the fullback. Stan is an excellent blocker, and uh, don't be surprised if Stan gets a couple of big long runs for us. All three of our backs can run fairly well. Big guy up front, John Ferragini. John is a solid football player for us. He's a two-way player. Uh, again, he's got to make the blocks. He's going to meet some quick people tonight, so I think that's going to be a key for him. Okay, thanks a lot, George. Good luck. Thank you. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. You're watching New Channel Sports on Cable 13. The power of teaching. The power to wake up young minds. The power to wake up the world. Teachers have that power. Reach for the power. Teach. We're recruiting young teachers. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. We're back at Liverpool High School for the start of the game. Kickoff just moments away. And the Warriors will get the ball. Let's check our officials for tonight's game. Clint Memory is the referee. Bob Metzler, Tom Yano, and Chuck Haven will call the penalties. Hopefully there won't be any tonight. Both teams will play clean. We talked about Hugo before the game. He doesn't have a last name. He did some destruction this after or this morning about midnight down in South Carolina and uh, possibly seeing some remnants as this game progresses. Wins right now, kind of a crosswind as we face the field from the right side into the Liverpool bench. So we'll see how it affects the passing and the kicking game tonight. Well, as we were talking about again before the game, Ed, you... 234 yards by Liverpool last week against Nottingham and five yards passing. So I don't think that the weather's going to affect Liverpool's game plan. They're going to run the wishbone and they're going to run it very effectively because that's their bread and butter. Nick Licamelli will kick it off for the Wildcats. I love that name. And back to receive for Liverpool. Number 33, Brian Bayless, Jamel Antuna, and Dave Sizniak. Look at Melly's kick. We'll come to Antuna about the 17. She gets up across the 30 to about the 32-yard line, and the Warriors will go in business from there. Jamel Antunas, is an interesting story you see him there, number 24. Jamel played for the Watertown team last year, Watertown High School, and led Watertown to 19 straight victories. So they last week he had 132 yards on just 16 carries against Nottingham. He was a big part of the offense against the Bulldogs. Matt McPhee runs the controls for Liverpool, and he pitches wide. Number 33, Brian Bayless. 
for no gain. Maybe even a loss here. There's the classic wishbone, and for those of you that aren't familiar with the wishbone out there, what the wishbone is, it's an option style offense. By that, the fullback is directly in back of the quarterback. To every play, just about the fullback is bellied into the line. The quarterback makes the determination then as whether or not to give the fullback the ball. And he watches whether or not the defensive tackle comes up to make the play. And we'll continue this after this play. Second and ten for the Warriors. Quick pitch to Antuna. And the West Genesee defense, about six of them, in on the stop. He gained only about three yards. It'll be third and nine. That's swarm tackling. That's that's what you have to do. You got to get it. You have to try to get 11 players to the ball, especially when you have two players. You have, you have Otis, Paragini, Vincent, Watts, Cordell, Courtney, and Iveson playing split end. That's the Liverpool starters in the backfield: McVie, Howard, Antuna, and Bayless. And the Liverpool line big on the end. Straight gives to Antuna. He's got daylight. Good hit. He's out to the 44-yard line before he was stopped by Bill Chris, number 33. Uh, there's, there's a match. Uh, two really good ball players meeting out there 10 yards downfield. You see, this is just a straight dive to Antuna. Big hole. Antuna now, he's looking inside for someone, but he doesn't see Bill Chris come from his defensive back position, and Bill makes what is called a picture-perfect tackle. Ed. First down for Liverpool on their own 44. The give right up the middle to Stan Howard. Let's see where the officials mark it. Stan Howard on the turn. Take about one. Seems they'll give him about three yards to the 47. Here's the defense for West Genesee. Jim Kelsey playing defensive end. Matt Byrne, Brian Kelly, Brian Tatellis, McLaren at defensive end. And the backfield, Perry, Man uh, Manipole, Snide, Dell, Chris, and Conklin. Second down play goes to Antuna again. Daylight, and again, Chris makes the stop. But not before Jamel picks up a first down at the 43-yard line of West Genesee. One thing about West Genesee, Ken, is that they play a lot of players both ways. I believe eight, maybe nine at times. That can, have a, that can have an effect towards the end of the game. You can see there, breaking tackles Antuna, lunging forward. That's a, that's a great effort. And again, he's brought down by Bill Christ, making a lot of tackles from his defensive back position. First down for Liverpool. And they go with a counterplay outside. That's Brian Bayless, who had a couple of yards turned back and probably got nothing out of it. Well, he maybe give him a half yard. When you have speed like Brian has, a lot of times what you're thinking about is getting to the outside. Bayless is a champion as, as far as track is concerned. And from what I have understand, Mr. Antuna, who's the newcomer on the team, has run at times even a little faster than Bayless. So they've got some speedsters in their backfield. Second and nine. McPhee will fumble. And it looks like West Genesee will get it. Number 55, Rob Manipal, the middle linebacker, came up with a loose ball. Now, with, when you're running the wishbone, because you've got two different times you can give the ball off, there's a lot of times with the exchanges you can have four exchanges. And right there, the fullback got the ball on his hip. The ball kicked forward to West Genesee football. First down for West Jenny. Scott Conklin leading the offensive quarterback. There's a loose ball. Liverpool claiming they have it. Come on, make a call! And the official agrees. That's like a reprieve from the governor, Ed. You go in there, you fumble, and then you get the ball right back. Momentum switching. Now, it looks like there's a broken play here. Looks like someone's reading the wrong way. The quarterback comes down the line, goes to give it to Chris. But you can see there's a bad exchange there. They're not at the point of exchange that they should be. Bill seems to have the ball at this particular time as he's spinning, but the ball seems to pop free, and there you see a bunch of Liverpool players going for it. So after a one-play delay at Liverpool, a rare pass! Just overthrown! As McPhee went for number 88, Jamar Otis, just out of his reach. He's a tough target to miss, too. He's a big guy. 6'2", 221, senior. Also a very good defensive end, but at that particular time, they were trying to 
cross up the West Tennessee defense by throwing the ball on first down. They only they only tried to throw the ball six times six last times week. and only successful once. Second and ten. And again they give it to Antuna and he gets good yardage. About nine. Inside the thirty. Well see when you run the ball like that, you don't have to throw the ball that much. And as we saw last week in the dome with Army in the third year. <laughs> right. Army didn't throw the ball. That's anymore. exactly right. Now you see here, it's called a counter buck. They're faking it one way, getting the defense moving, coming back the other way, and there's Altoona keeping the legs moving. That's what you want to do as a halfback. Keep the legs churning. Third and one. They pitch it to Baylor. He's got a first down. He's inside the 25. Manipole came up with a nice tackle there. You watch the West Genesee Wildcat defense. They play very stable, very sound, very fundamental defense. Everyone comes in there and sticks their shoulders in there. Everybody, there's not too much arm tackling going on out there, and that's what's made them so effective over the years. Coach Brothers has really coached these kids well. Now they come down the line, they give straight ahead to the fullback, Howard, who got nothing. Well, I think an interesting thing, Ed, about running the wishbone is it's a feel type of offense. You'll watch initially, it'll be, it'll take a while for the offense to warm up sometimes if you watch the colleges that do it, the Texas teams, the Oklahoma teams, because what the quarterback has to do again is he has to read whether or not that defensive tackle is respecting, in this particular instance, Stan, Stan Howard. McPeak keeps this time. He's got running room, and he's all the way inside the 10, down to about the 7-yard line. Well, that was a fine example. In that particular time, the defensive tackle did come up to tackle Stan Howard, and what and what McPeak did was he just put it in, took it out, and then allowed up uh, allowed Stan Howard to throw a block for him. And you see from our ground camera, they're running the option to the other side. He's faking it in there, and now McPeak has got plenty of room to run right up the middle. And you can see all the defenders coming down, and he gets tackled by a host of West Jenny defenders. Here he is keeping again. Did he get in? Looked like he made a last dive for it, but they're going to spot him just short. And I don't believe you can get much shorter than he is. Well, he can't get closer than that. They look like they're right on the goal line. They'll have a couple cracks. A second and goal from, well, let's call it maybe about the six-inch line. And all the ball has to do is break the plane of the goal line to be six points. McPhee to Antuna. Touchdown. So aside from the interruption of the one play that they got back on the next fumble, a nice drive by the Warriors for six. Very nice drive. And when you think the key play was that they opened up with a pass, and then they had a second and ten situation, and after that particular play, they ran on the second and ten, they ran an off-tackle play, and they picked up nine yards. They got them back into the hunt. If West Jenny had been able to hold them, then you would have seen a completely different, perhaps a completely different scenario. Brian Tenshaw will try to add the extra point out of a McPhee hole. And he puts it through. And he puts it through by about 40 yards. Coach Manchicaro was talking about Tenshaw before the game and said, this kid is a legitimate Division I prospect. He said, if we have the wind, and there will be plenty of wind here tonight, it's just we don't know which, the, which direction it'll be coming from. He said they might try a 60-yard field goal. So you can see it's Liverpool 7, West Genesee 0. Here is just a simple off-tackle play. Altoona getting in the air. There was no one there. There was good blocking up front there by Perigini and Robert Benson. And that's six points. 5.54 left first quarter. So you talked about the wishbone offenses from colleges like Texas and Oklahoma. A lot of schools are that made their names with the wishbone abandoning it. That's right. A lot of schools have, and they're finding that with the rules, the rule changes, it's more advantageous to throw the football. In the old days, you could bump a receiver all over the field. Nowadays, you can only give a receiver one bump within a five-yard area, and that's why you're seeing a lot of teams going to the run and shoot, which is giving you four wide receivers and giving you a chance to get the ball in the air and have some exciting things happen. Henshaw will kick it off. 
and he hammers it to Chris, number 33. He's got some room. Got through a pile and got up to about the 38-yard line. Billy Chris with that classic fullback style. He was going right down the middle, and he was going north to south. There wasn't going to be any going left to right, and that's what you got to like as far as returning the kickoff is concerned. Now watch Bill Chris here. Now he realizes there's going to be contact. He puts two hands on the football, tucks it away, keeps the legs going. That's a nice run, Bill. So West Genesee's second offensive trip. Their only play before they fumbled. Conklin. Quick pitch outside to number nine, Glillen Jones, and he's off to the races. Only number 11, Dave Sisniak to beat, and Sisniak came up with the tackle, but not before Glillen Jones went all the way down inside the 20. I think Glillen thought he didn't know he had so much room when he first starts. Watch, he sees and he sees all the screen right here. It gets a great kick out block there. Then he gets a nice cut, and now it's off to the races. And you can see he's got a blocker downfield with him, and it's a smart play for the blocker to lay off. And a great tackle by the defensive back there, David Sisniak. 46 Made, yards on the play. That would have been six points if Sisniak hadn't come across there. Just one man to beat. Just couldn't get by him. Nice defensive play. This time, they give it inside to Chris. He gets a couple. And again, what you'll see from these teams all night is run, run, run. And more run. They, they're both teams that have proven that they can run the football. And I think that, and as I've talked about before, momentum is such an important thing. And as you can see, that one run can swing momentum back to West Genesee side now. Second and eight for the Wildcats. Gives to Jones. This time, not nearly as much as he got the first time. He picked up about three. We we'll call it second and six for third and six. That's a good tackle by Chris Johnson, the six foot, 172 pound senior. Well, what do you call here? Third and six. You're down seven nothing early, and I, I, I would, I would suspect that Mr. Jones is going to get the football one more time because you're in two down area. So they, they're going to, they're going to hammer it out both downs. They're not going to do anything fancy. Conklin fakes and he'll throw. And he overthrew his man. That was number 88, Bill Sullivan. And see, that's why I'm up here in the booth and um, not down there on the field. Well, you put your neck on the line, and that's sure, really my sure. I, I would have, I probably would have run the ball. So it appears that the Wildcats will attempt the field goal. Now what they're doing now, this play is if there's not enough ball players over there for Liverpool, they'll run an option from this. And now, the, now you could, there was enough ball players over there to potentially stop it so all the linemen come over. Look at Melly's attempt from 32 yards. He knuckleballed it through. Good. Hey, you know what they say, Ed, when, when you're looking at the paper tomorrow, all you're going to see is 32-yard field goal. It, it, and it's going to be three points no matter which way you slice it. It wasn't pretty, but it was, it was effective because now the score is 7-3 to three with Liverpool on top. 4-0-1 to go in this first quarter. The score was 4 one remaining in the first quarter. And both teams proving early they can move the ball. Nick Licamelli, who's the kicker last year and one of the returning players. You can see it went up on a trajectory, probably just got up about as high as the goal post at around the 10-yard line and just continued to sail that way. And it didn't hurt that he had the wind in back of him. And as we said earlier, with Hurricane Hugo's a little bit of remnants here. That wind going is now favoring West Genesee, so we could see a pretty hefty kickoff here if Nick gets his foot into the ball. As a matter of fact, the ball is down, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll have to tee it up again. Have you ever seen those games where the ball keeps going down and it gets, and then one poor guy who wants to go down on the kickoff is forced to sit there and hold the football for him like you're back in grammar school or something? And the kick return team loves that because it's one less guy they have to worry about. That's blocking. exactly right. Cadillac Amelia will kick off. Bayless, Antuna, and Zizniak are back. Exciting ball players back to return this, too. Everyone he can put fly. Good foot into this one. Bayless will take it at the seven. He comes near side, hurdles the player, and gets up over the 35 yard line. Brian Bayless out of the 
Brian's exciting. Brian's one of those kids that, again, one thing you can't coach is one thing you can't coach is speed. And here's a beautiful camera angle from the ground. You can see Bayless coming straight towards you, right into your living room. And then go up in the air, Brian. Oh, that's why you're a track champion. That looked pretty. He'll be running the hurdles in the spring. First and ten Warriors from the 36 and a half, we'll call it. They do a little counter play, and it's Antuna going wide. The number 87, Darren McLaren runs him down. Now that's just pure individual effort and talent. And again, Jamel is from Watertown, and it's tough to come from one school and then to fit into another t uh, school system. But you can see here, here's where natural talent, he just makes something out of nothing. Defensive end comes in, he beats Mr. Dell to the outside, and then drags a couple of people for an extra two, three yards. Second and three, and it's Bayless, and he'll get a first down. Right up around midfield. It looks as if the Liverpool Warriors are going to be very effective in running the ball. Now what's going to happen, it's going to, it's going to make West Genesee do a little more stunting and a little more tricks as far as defense is concerned because now they're going to have to guess where Liverpool is running because of a, perhaps a slight size difference favoring Liverpool. They can't handle them straight on. First and ten for the Warriors. Little pitch to Antuna, and he gets about six before he's met by a few West Jenny players. Now, if you saw that pat, that last play, that was just a straight line surge. And on that play, you could see the Liverpool line pushing the West Genesee line backwards. Conklin and McLaren. As you can see right here, the defensive end comes up, but we don't see any defensive tackles. Everybody's downfield because of if you see Otis and you see a number of the other linemen for Liverpool doing a really good job out there. Second and five. And McPhee turns. He faked to the fullback, kept it himself, and only got about a yard. That was the play that worked so effectively when they were having their drive for a touchdown. And they just tried to go into the other they tried to go into the other side. But on that particular time, David Schneid and Rob Manipole and Matt Burns said, No, no, not this way, guys. Not this side. Number eighty two, Tim Hendry checks in with the play and checks into the game. He and Jason Allen switch positions and bring in the plays. Third and three for the Warriors. And again a gift to Antuna. Oh, big hit in front by David Schneid. And Tuna looked like he was going to get a first down, but he was stopped short. That's called getting stopped dead in your tracks. And again, picture-perfect tackling by the West Genesee defenders. Watch this Wildcat. Watch, watch him come up. Watch Snide right here come up. Boom. Hello. Remember me? But look, Antuna still won't go down. you got to love that. The kid weighs, the kid only weighs 155 pounds, and he's tough as nails. And like I was saying earlier, coming from Watertown and fitting into this system is usually something very difficult to do, but it shows the kind of caliber athlete that he is. Fourth and two at the 44. So Manjik Carroll electing not to punt, and we'll see if it works. Antuna's got a first down. He's across the 40 down to the 38. He got some big blocking on the left side. And a big play there. A real big play. Because when you have fourth down, it's in that particular situation, with West Genesee driving, West Genesee could have taken the ball over, momentum could have swung. You can see it's just a surge off to the left side. Nothing fancy, maybe a little face mask in there. But right over Kevin Cordell and John Fortney, big six-foot, 219-pound senior tackle, and they picked up the first down. Still first and ten, and they give straight ahead to Stan Howard. Gets about five. Met by, among others, Brian Bell, number 52. I stood next to Stan before when, when we were interviewing, and I mean, Stan, was, they have him listed at um, 177, but he, he looks stronger than that. He's, he's a real strong kid. I said, uh, good luck tonight. He didn't even smile at me. I, these guys are ready to play football. Second and five for Liverpool. Strictly man to man coverage on the only wide out that Liverpool has. Hendry is wide, and again, they give inside. This is Bayless. He breaks the tackle, gets down to the 25 yard line, and a first down. Brian Bayless running hard there. And when you're the other running back, now Brian Bayless was a big running back for Liverpool last year, and now he has Antuna in the backfield. 
Antune is going to take a lot of the pressure off of what Bayless might have thought would have been the glut of the work being on his shoulders, but it also helps you to work harder because you've got a kid next to you that's playing so well. One quarter in the books, Liverpool a touchdown, West Jenny a field goal. You're watching New Channel Sports on Cable 13. Life is a series of choices, what you eat, how you look, whether you do drugs or not, you know, cocaine, crack. See, only you can decide because the only person responsible is you. Now, if you make the right choice, there's nothing you can't accomplish. If you make the wrong choice, all your other decisions are made for you. water break on the field as they get ready for the second quarter and Ken how do you assess the first one? First quarter looked very very interesting from the standpoint that the ball was only put in the air twice both times were ineffective by both teams. It's a running game. We're going to see a lot of that. It's going to be perhaps even a quick football game. But what I would see right now is with Liverpool knocking on the door, if West Genesee doesn't do something as far as bringing some of their defensive backs up to help out with that inside trapping, they're going to find themselves to be in a little bit of trouble here. So we start the second quarter. Liverpool on the West Genesee 26-yard line, first and 10. And it's a quick give to Howard, and he gets down to the 20-yard line. We haven't seen anything fancy from Liverpool. We haven't seen any reverses, any end-arounds, or anything along those lines. What we've seen is a lot of um, in-between-the-tackle plays. So one counterbuck, and counterbuck is where you fake one side, fake the one halfback, turn around and give it to the other halfback. But besides that, it's basically going to give the ball to one of the guys, and uh, let's see if you can come up and stop him. Player shaking up on the field, number 74, John Fortney. We just mentioned John Fortney. He's a uh, senior. He's one of the returning starters from last year, and John's been anchoring down that, that offensive line. And he's a big kid, 6'2", 219, and he would be sorely missed if it's, um, if it's an injury that would keep him out of the game. Let's hope not. When you look at the rosters of the two teams, uh, you look at the offensive line of Liverpool. It has some experienced players, a lot of seniors there, and the entire backfield is seniors. And then West Genesee from a Section 3 champion graduating 25 players. So they have a little rebuilding to do, but put up a fine effort last week, winning 21 nothing and one against Whitesboro. And... Uh, and this week, 7-3, going into the second quarter. Perhaps against Whitesboro. Whitesboro's more, if you will, their physical size. West Tennessee is very well coached, so they're going to know where to go, and they're going to be in the right spots, but you can't coach size. Second and five for Liverpool. And again, a little counter play, and there's Antuna stopped at the line. Number 55, Rob Manipole in on the stop. I plan on calling Rob Manipole's name a lot. Now, Manipole is shooting a gap on this particular situation, comes in to the backfield, and makes the hit. I, I believe there was probably a stack stunt on on that particular play, and by that, what happens is Manipole is, is um, positioned right in back of Brian Bell. Bell will slant one way, Manipole will follow him. One blocker can't pick up both of them in that particular situation. They guessed right. Let's see what the Warriors do on third and six. It's B fumble that he paid for it. Number 88, Bill Sullivan, right there to drop him well back behind the line of scrimmage. All about the 32-yard line, a loss of 10. He was thinking about trying to go deep to his uh, receiver, Chamar Otis. The play was set up properly, but then Mc McPhee drops the ball. You can see it was it was hit on Bayless's uh, pad, and after that, Sullivan just does the swing around tackle and all momentum gets you to the ground and now you've got a big fourth down the last time it was fourth and two they went for it now it's fourth and 14 so they bring in ten shaw to try a hefty field goal 47 yards another knuckleball and this one's going to be wide to the left and he hooked that just a little bit and didn't get underneath it enough but you can see just by the easy swing he had plenty on that Again, like Lucamelli's kick, he just didn't meet it correctly. Lucamelli was fortunate to have it go through. Right, Lucamelli just did get it through. Nick Lucamelli. 
and the wind still is blowing this way. We've seen the wind swirling, so we're going to keep you up to date as to what the wind's doing. At this particular time, West Genesee will be going into the wind. And there you see a beautiful camera. You can see right up in the upper right-hand corner, there's the flag blowing straight towards you. And the new channel's crack staff doing another fantastic Where job. Where would we be without them? First and ten for West Genesee at their own 20-yard line. And a quick pitch to Willen Jones. And he's got some running room. Ran into his own player. And therefore only picked up five. Could have got a couple more. Willen Jones, not a, and again, not a big kid. Sort of like his counterpart, Antuna, on the other side. Willen's 5'7", 155-pound junior. But he's got what you call shifty hips. He's probably a good dancer. Now watch him dance here. As he gets to the outside and dances by one guy and moves past another guy and runs over his own man. And there you go. That's a good effort. That's a good effort. He picked up five, second and five. 9.30 to go in the second quarter. Coach Manja Carroll looking on. They send number 23, Joe Dell, in motion. And the play goes nowhere. In fact, it probably lost the yard. It almost looked like someone was off sides on that play. They had a stunt on, and they were bringing one of their linebackers, Jared, Jared Fry, coming in there. And they, they just got into the backfield. They weren't picked up by any of the linebackers, I mean, the, the linemen. And it looks like uh, there was a sack. You know, watch it. Watch the lower party screen. You see the jumping, and there you see it looks like Mr. Fry kind of jumped a little bit. And he was there awfully quickly. He evidently didn't cross the plane, or he would have got flagged for it. <laughs> or maybe, maybe your wish came true. No, no flags. <laughs> no today. flags. No they flags. <laughs> Third and seven. And comes from back to pass, and he misfires. <laughs> He was looking for number 87, Darren McLaren. You know, that's a tough play after you've been sacked like that, and then you're rolling out that same way, and you've, and you've got good coverage. It's usually tough to bear down. Now, you can see him right here. He does have plenty of time, but there was good coverage on that play. He was looking for McLaren with a little, they call it a waggle. That's when you bring the offside guard and have him in front of you and roll out to one way or another. Coach one, Brothers likes that play. In one quarter, we've had shifty hips and a waggle, and this is marvelous, isn't it? <laughs> shifty hips. Oh, it sounds like new dance steps, doesn't it? <laughs> Will and Jones does the kicking, and it got caught up in the wind, and it's going nowhere. In fact, it takes a Liverpool bounce, and this punt will go for negative yards. <laughs> One negative yard. It's 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 very windy out here. It's probably not that windy, but it is it is fairly windy out here. And you can see when the ball, unfortunately, he got it off of too high of his instep. What you try to do when you're punting the ball is you try to let the ball go off of your instep. There, he got it a little higher, and it looked like it went off of his uh, off his shin. But instead of just going straight up, the wind caught it and then started bringing it back the other way. Probably a bad dream or something. Warriors take advantage of the wind in great field position, and they're going to throw. McBee is top, and there's a loose ball, and number 87, Darren McLaren, has it, and he's out to the 45 yard line. And there we go. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. The strange things turnovers will do to a football game, but the thing that's good is that from a Wildcat standpoint, you got to be happy because they caused the turnover. It wasn't something that was given to them. From the blind side, you see big Jim Kelsey just bearing down. Boom! Oh, baby! That was the kind. You couldn't, you know, McPhee couldn't even see him, and now the ball is just laying around, and McLaren picks it up, and he's off to the races, and he gets tripped up by Brian Bayless, and I guess when you're racing against a guy who's a champ, that's kind of tough. But still, West Genesee football, first and ten. At the 44, Willem Jones there. He's stopped by number 42, Chris Johnson. Oh, you'll be reading a lot of numbers there. Number 75, John Perui, and others. <laughs> and a host of others. What other cliches? A host of others. I like that. He did get a yard. One on four. Second and long here coming up. Second and nine. He gives it to number 48, Dave Mesumichi. Dave Mesumichi on the carry. He picks up four, and it'll be third and five. 
43 to go in the second quarter. Liverpool, a 7-3 lead. Liverpool playing a classic 4-3 defense. Coughlin will throw. He's got a man wide open downfield. Just threw it out of bounds. McLaren was down there. Ouch. And McLaren landed right on the uh, cement part there. But he's up and, and, and going. That was a good effort. You can see again how the wind is playing havoc with the football. The ball was hung up there and the wind had a chance to take it. There's the fake. You see number 50 out in front. That's the waggle. He's got time. He's waiting for his receiver to get open. He hung in there. Took a good pop. But look at the wind. Just take the ball and take the ball. That's a heck of a great effort there, Darren. So brings up a fourth down, and Jones is back to punt. Last time he got it hung up in the wind and went for minus one yard. Well, Gold will be, he'll be uh, on top of this one. Here's the fake. Here's the fake. They throw. You got a penalty marker down. That's the pass great. was incomplete. That was a great interception there also. Oh, a, that was a very good interception there. We've got a number 25, and I believe that Roger Iveson wears, wears number 25 as well as wearing number 86. Motion White refused. Motion White refuse. So the Warriors decline and they'll take the ball at their own 40 yard line. Now that was that was that was all strange right there. I, it was a good it was a good attempt at, at the fake, but when you have a fake, you have to make sure that everybody in the backfield, especially Mr. Jones, uh, the punter, that they know they have to be set. You can't have different men moving. <laughs> And then, like I said, Iverson came up with a great interception. First and ten from the 40-yard line. The Liverpool comes with the wishbone again, and it's Antuna getting the pitch. He's stripped up at the 46-yard line by number 55, Rob Manipal. Rob Manipal stops Jamel holds the football in a precarious way. He, when he runs, he swings the ball high, swings it way out there. Uh, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he ever had any problems holding on to the football the way he runs with that reckless abandon. Antuna's already carried the ball 11 times tonight. They go straight ahead to Howard. He got a couple. There's a little, there's a little mix up in the backfield there. Bayless and Antuna ran right into each other. I believe that they should have been following following McPhee. But fortunately for the Liverpool Warriors, this was it was just going to be a straight dive to the fullback Stan Howard. Third and three. From the 48. Again out of the wishbone. That's all you'll see. Pitch back to Bayless. He's got a first down across midfield to the 49 of West Genesee. Uh, if you notice now, the West Genesee kids have gotten a little more confidence. They're shooting the gaps a little more effectively, and they're coming up and making more tackles, and they're not giving up a big play. They're not giving up the big chunks yardage. Now here's a pitch. It's going off tackle. Shamar Otis does a great job at the point of attack, but there's Manipal, a name we're going to be reading off a lot, coming from his middle linebacker position and making a stop. Right now, Manipal is standing around eight, eight yards deep, waiting for something. That give was to Bayless, and he was stopped cold. Brian Detalis, number 66 on the stop. Hand off to Bayless. No game on the play. Stop by and I think that's the first time we've seen negative yardage for Liverpool. Liverpool's been very effective running the football. Tim Hendry again checks in with the play. Tim was so excited. It looked like Tim, Tim was going to the wrong huddle there for a second. And no, no, with the guys in the dark blue. Over here, Timmy. Let's see what play he brought in. McPhee couldn't get it out of the stomach of the fullback and then finally pitched to Antuna. He 
got a couple, but that really slowed the play down when he couldn't take the ball out of the fullback's tummy. Now what happens is Howard and McPhee have to get to know each other very well so that they understand when he's given the ball and when not. The fullback can't grab the football. You can see right there, it almost looked like he was trying to grab the fo football. Oh, that was Bayless who was going into the line. Now, Antuna isn't really slowing up. He's trying to set something up. He's trying to wait for something to happen. But that was a great play by Shane Perry. Just stringing it out, stringing it out, waiting for help to come, and then making the tackle. Third and nine for the Warriors from the West Genesee 48. And it gives to Antuna. And he drives and drives and drives for a first down to the 36-yard line. Get Broke a couple of tackles. Moving. Nice run. Great run. Kept those legs moving. As you can see right here, it's the counter buck again. They get everybody going one way, go back another way. And there's Jamel breaking one tackle, breaking two tackles, keeping his balance and dragging Shane Perry along till he gets a first down for the Liverpool Warriors. 13 carries for 67 yards for Antuna. We still got 318 in the second quarter. Counter play to Bayless. He's got some room. He's inside the 30. This reminds me of that old show tune, I Can Do That. Antuna goes over and then Bayless says, I can do that. This is a similar play, you see, they, they fake one way again, and then they give it to Bayless. And Bayless does his little spinning move, steps on someone's back and continues to roll. And brings up a second and short, which is always a fun time. You can have something interesting happen here. They could do an unusual play, maybe. Especially with these weapons. Let's see what they do. And it's McPhee going to throw it. He got popped again by the same man. And that's number 65, Matt Byrne. Tackled at the 25-yard line. But again, number 75, Jim Kelsey, came from the backside to cause the fumble. Well, I tell you, Liverpool has got to get that backside block. If they want to run, if they want to run that play-action pattern, they tried to do it once before, and the exact same thing happened. Big Jim Kelsey comes barreling down, boom, right in the back. The ball's up in the air. That's considered an interception, and now it's time to ramble. You see, Big 65, Matt Byrne, the defensive tackle. He's a defensive tackle, and Antuna catches him easily. Tries to strip the ball out. As a matter of fact, does kind of get the ball, but he's already down, and it's West Genesee with the big play. And on the next play. It's Kelsey going offside. He's excited. He's, oh, he's, sure. he's He can do that. It's okay. He, he's excited. I don't blame him. And that's, I tell you, I used to stay up at night dreaming about hitting people like that. And Jim Kelsey's gotten two great opportunities and he's come through for his team both times causing, causing turnovers. Ball start. White. So that'll bring up a first and 15 for the Wildcats. 38-yard interception return. Yeah, it, it, right now, it's not as important that they did that, but they've got to capitalize. So here's Conklin back to pass. He's being pressured, and now he'll run for some yardage. He scoots out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. A gain of about 11. That was a great job by Scott Conklin and being able to avoid the big rush that was coming in there by Roger Iverson. Iverson was bearing down, hoping to do the same thing that Kelsey did, but um, Conklin was up to the challenge, gave him a little dipsy doodle, went in, went back outside and picked up a substantial amount of yardage. He ran about 30 yards to pick up six there. Second and five. Conklin, little turn, gives to the fullback. Chris, I believe, got a yard. Billy Chris, he loves running in there, too. I asked Bill before the game how he was feeling. Uh, I'm ready to play football. Uh, you, you can tell. Uh, you like fullbacks. Fullbacks, just they, they, they like just running right in the middle and having people bang on them. And it's almost that Zonka thing, you know, a little blood on them. They feel like they're in the game, a little mud and everything. Get dirty. John Madden football. John Madden, that's right. He, he, that's what, yeah, he could be a Madden. He could be on the mad, all Madden. All Madden. Team. Third and four for the Wildcats. They send a man in motion. Conklin's going to throw, and he's got a man out there. 
caught at the two yard line, Darren McLaren. He's been running that route a couple of times tonight, and finally they got him the ball. That's called, this is a waggle play. Now watch how this is set up. It's set up by the fake in the line, and then he's going deep for McLaren. McLaren adjusts to the football and comes back. Dave Sesniak had a great, had great coverage on him, but lost the football. And when when he turned to cover McLaren and didn't have the football anymore, McLaren kept his eyes on it and made a great play. Wildcats try to take the lead. Chris gets the call. Chris Scott Conklin uh, signaled the touchdown, but it doesn't count when he signals it. Uh, you gotta Referee wait. says he's a bit short. You gotta wait for the guys with those striped shirts on to do it. That was a very good play there by Jared Fry coming in there and making a good hit. This is where the defensive linemen are going to be submarining, taking down the interference so their linebackers can come up and make the tackle. You see Chamar Otis getting his teammates going, getting them psyched. So, fellas, let's stop them right here. It's only 7-3. Second and inches. Conklin will keep it himself, but he's bottled up. No signal from the referees. Bring up third down. The middle part of the Liverpool line doing a great job right there. That's right, and that's what it's all about. Like I just finished saying, those linemen have to get up now, underneath those people. You got Perugini and Nazolino. Those people are down in there. They're, they're, they're ready to just come up and, and strip things down. The Wildcats call timeout. 26 seconds left in the half. Liverpool leading 7-3. But the ball just inches from their goal line. There's a big play coming up here. Big play it could determine the outcome of the game because if West Genesee scores and goes into the end zone, then we're talking about momentum with them and they're sky high going in there. And you can see there the coach for the Liverpool talking to his players. You know, we can take a look now and see how the defensive line surges and actually can come up on your shot and make a big pile up and look at that you see the D line look at them all in there West Genesee's firing off the ball well but couldn't get any traction there's even Bayless coming up and once you have a defensive lineman make a stalemate he's done his job that's all a defensive lineman is asked to do to win that battle of making sure he doesn't get moved anywhere and that's exactly what the big boys up front did for Liverpool the Wildcats will try for a third time inside the one Conklin to Chris. Big play defensively. We'll try to get the number. That's Bayless. That looked like Brian Bayless just sl was slashing through there. He picked the gap, and Bayless just read the play perfectly. Now watch coming up from the top of your screen. Bayless comes right in. Boom! Whoa, right there on the five. But Chris keeps his... Keeps his momentum going, and Tuna comes over, grabs the other leg, and stops him. And again, we've got 16 seconds, we've got fourth down, we've got one yard to go. We've got excitement here. Now what do you do? Do you go for the field goal, or do you go for the touchdown? You've been stopped three times. Well, you've got a good field goal kicker in Nick Licamelli, but you want your team to feel as if they can punch it in. I know even though West, some West Genesee supporters would say that we're outsized on the line here, there are still, there's still that pride, and you want your team to believe that we can score against these people. Again, as I said prior to that last play, this could be the most important play of the game. If Liverpool stops them, Liverpool's defense is going to be sky high, and coming out in the second quarter, I mean the second half, Half, it could be uh, again much more a lot more excitement like we've been seeing. Almost needless to say, someone's going to go in locker room sky high, and someone's going to go in very down right here. That's exactly right. So this could be the game right here. Fourth down and a little more than a yard. They're going to do some sort of option. They send a line. man in motion, and they pitch to Dylan Jones. He's got the corner for six. Everybody was bunched in the middle, thinking that Chris was going to take the football. And they just gave a quick pitch to their old speedster, Willem Jones, the 5'7", 155-pound junior, went in unaccosted for six points. Score is now 9-7 to seven in favor of the West Genesee Wildcats. So after the big turnover, West Jenny catches in. 
And again, everyone's talking about size, and it's like that old expression my roommate used to tell me. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Licamelli will attempt the extra point. High snap. It's good. Joe Dell, nice job getting the ball down to the tee. And there's a late flag coming in there. Antuna was coming in, and he just missed the kick altogether and dove over and got the holder. The holder seems to be okay, but all this means is that when you kick off, kick off 15 yards closer. Right, this particular situation isn't anything that perhaps is going to hurt Liverpool with 13 seconds, I'm sure. Coach Manager Carroll wants to just get his team into the locker room and talk to him about this first half. They have things going their way for three plays, and uh, is there any type of moral victory to stop them three times before they finally put it in? You, defensively, you feel good about the fact that you've stopped them, but the fact that this team did score and that they ran outside and made it look so easy, that's got to be disheartening. I don't care who you are. And you can see there's Chris going. Look at the big pileup. Everybody thinks Billy Chris is going to have the football, but they give it to Corwin Jones, and he's in the end zone. Yeah, wave that fist. And he was way outside to begin with. Oh, yeah, it, and they... They knew that they were going to try to outflank them and run outside those great defensive ends that Liverpool has. Obviously, the key so far has been Jim Kelsey coming up with those two turnovers by, by causing them by hitting um, McPhee from the blind side those two times. 13 seconds to go in the half. And the Wildcats up by three. This is usually a time where you want to kick something low, something that's not returnable, a squib kick, something that's on the ground. So it takes a little, you don't care if you're going to give them good field position because, again, there's only 13 seconds left in the game. And the wind seems to be dying down to about, or I should say, 13 seconds left to go in the half. I'm sorry. Licamelli waiting for the signal. He gets it. And the ball falls over. And they have to bring in the man to hold it. Hey, hey. A thankless job, but someone has to do it sometimes. There's Coach Manta Carroll with, with his star quarterback. McPhee's going over what he wants him to do when he gets in there. And Licamelli will try it again. And he does. Little nubber. Lands about the 33-yard line. Picked up by Antuna, who's not the best guy to kick it to. If you're West Genesee, he gets outside to about the 49-yard line. But only five seconds left in the first half. Antuna's very impressive. 150, 155, and coming around the corner there, he put his head down against a real tough football player in uh, Bill Ryder and did a good job there. Definitely a do-it-all guy. Do-it-all guy. And with the wind, I wouldn't be surprised if if Coach um, Coach Mangicaro just went and, and lost the ball up in the air. I mean, you've got you've got the wind, and with the, with that, and with the potential of a pass interference, anything can happen to end this first half. And we've we've had a great half of football so far. Sure have. And uh, Mangicaro is going to go out and talk to his players about just what they're going to do on what seems to be the final play of this first half. Liverpool took the lead and Tuna scored. They went up 7-0. Look at Melly, a field goal to make it 7-3. And then Will and Jones scoring just before this half with 13 seconds to play. You should be and out. West Genesee has a 10-7 lead. 10-7 lead. Defense, you've got to play QB and option. Coach Don't let the tight end block you down. Get rid of him. Yes. All we're going to do is See play you. here for a few seconds. We get out of here. Yeah. And we'll come back and do some more damage. Come on, let's go. Come on, wait. Let's get it together. we got to watch the option. West coach, Genesee coach Joe Carruthers uh, giving his instructions on this final play what to watch for and I'm sure that coach Carruthers is talking from the most conservative standpoint which is let's make sure from a defensive back standpoint that we're deep let's make sure we don't let anyone get in back of us in the game is the kicker and coach Mangicaro said you know we'll try a 60 yard field goal we believe he can do it and they're lining up for a field goal this is from 67 yards well short 
He landed at the three yard line. And that's the half. West Genesee leading Liverpool 10 7 at the half. And we'll be back in a moment. It's easy to think one person can't make a difference, but 200 million people can. If every one of us volunteered just five hours a week to the causes we care about, if we all donated just 5% of what we earn, there'd be almost no limit to what we can do. Just five hours, just 5%. When you think about it, it's not that much to give. And what we could get back is immeasurable. A perplexing problem has puzzled young people since the beginning of time. How to get a job without experience, and how to get experience without a job. The answer is cooperative education, a nationwide program that lets college students work at real jobs for real pay while they're getting an education. I knew that. Back at Liverpool High School at halftime, West Genesee leading Liverpool by a score of 10-7. And Ken, your assessment of the first half? I believe it's a, been a great game. The key of the game has been to ter two turnovers that have been caused by West Genesee's defense and stopping Liverpool inside their own 40-yard line. Well, as we do every halftime of the game of the week, we check out the cheerleaders, and they put in just as much time as the athletes, and some will, of course, say they are athletes. And let's look at the, the girls from West Genesee. Lisa Petracci, a captain. Beth Doyle, a captain. Laura Kess, also a captain. Try captains, of course. Tracy Radnovich, Colleen Galvin, Kelly Walker, Sarah Ryan, Tina Rasmuski, Tasha DeWaters, Katie Dolan, Susie Tracy, and Kerry Hosworth and the coaches, Nancy Doyle. Folks here at Liverpool being entertained by the excellent Liverpool High School band. Huge contingent out on the field right now. And now let's check the Liverpool cheerleaders. With Lori White, the captain. Jen Farrell, co-captain. Deanna Procopio. Erica Venas. Bernadette Bushnell, Carrie Tolhurst, Missy Tartaro, Tracy Shinto, Tina Graham, Tammy Zarillo, Michelle Campola, Carrie Castor, and Kelly White is the mascot, and the coach is Mary Fitzgibbon. She's in her third year here at Liverpool. Ten, ten to seven, West Genesee leading Liverpool, and we will be back in just a moment. Drugs is like being on top of the world. Everyone says so. Everyone seems to be having one dandy old time. Hey, it's part of growing up. Or is it? Just think about this. Before you go and do something you've never done before, you just better know what you're jumping into. Buckle up, don't even press your luck I can tell you over and over, but it won't be enough Some say it ain't cool, but that's irrelevant Don't be a fool, say you don't need it You must be crazy, a lot of other people thought they knew It happened to them, and it can happen to you So buckle up, and hey, yo We all wear our safety belts I didn't Back at Liverpool High School, just about the start of the second half, but first let's run down the first half statistics. You can see that Liverpool dominated rushing. 
about 50 yards, 128 to 71. There was only uh, four passes attempted by West Genesee, one by Liverpool. The pass by Genesee was a big play that brought him down to the goal line. However, I think the key to the game has been that there have been three turnovers lost by Liverpool, two by West Genesee, but not as much as they've been turnovers, but where they were lost. All of Liverpool's turnovers occurred while they were inside the 30-yard line of West Genesee. If they had just had one of those chances back, perhaps they could have scored because their running game has been very effective. I still see, I still see this game as a very even game. West Genesee is going to take the football initially. If they can sustain a drive, perhaps they'll put it in the minds of the Liverpool people that they're, they're for real here. Very even game. Error free. Just the one penalty. 10-7, indicative of the close game. Some individual statistics. Rushing. Jamel Antuna. 13 carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown. Willen Jones for West Genesee. 5 carries, 55 yards, 46 on one play, and a touchdown. We're about to begin the second half. Brian Tenshaw will kick it off for Liverpool. The wind has really picked up here. Must have talked to a fisherman at halftime. He said it's about picked up about 10 knots. And uh, Tenshaw knotted that one through the end zone for a touchback, and West Genesee will start from its own 20. Uh, that, that ball landed all the way at the end of the end zone, and it was a line drive. If he had gotten that one up in the wind, it, it probably would be around Cayuga County right about now. So West Genesee will go on offense. Scott Conklin will run the show. And again, remember that West Genesee scored right before the end of the half so these guys are really sky high uh, Liverpool on the other hand they feel like they've got something to prove to their hometown crowd well let's see how that touchdown just before the half, half affected the two teams got an equipment time there now if any if if there's ever a time when the, a ball player doesn't have his chin strap working right or perhaps the shoulder pads or whatever he's allowed to talk to the official and point to the equipment that he needs to have replaced and at that particular time the official will call an official timeout and give him a chance this is Brian Bayless who came off the field they were looking down on the ground and I wonder if it was a contact lens he's kind of pointing toward his eye uh, the bre now the wind has picked up considerably. It started to uh, even shake the booth a little bit. So there's Wes Jenny on offense, and they hand straight ahead to Chris, who pulls his way for nine yards. West Genesee is going to be going into the wind, and also if they get into a situation where they're going to try for a field goal, they're going to be kicking into the wind. So that's going to make them do things differently, as we saw in the first half when they were going into the wind, and they had the fake punt instead of attempting to punt the ball again. With Bayless, it just seemed to be a mouthpiece. So he should be back in very soon. West Genesee, second and one from its own 29. They send Ryder in motion, and they send Chris up the middle, and he picks up a first down to just shy of the 35-yard line. And, and you can see that West Jenny, who rushed for 70 yards in the first half and had spurts of being effective, but most of that was by Mr. Jones, number nine. Now you're seeing Chris going off tackle, and uh, you're seeing more of the diversified offense that West Genesee possesses. They spot it right at the 35, first and 10. Split back. And Joe Dell goes in motion and our penalty play. I want you to watch for from the offense of West Genesee is they're going to try and do a lot more trapping, do a lot more angle blocking because they feel that they don't have the size on their on, on their on their side. Five yards marched off against Liverpool. Dead ball foul. Crossman blue. Dead ball foul. Crossman blue. First and five. Now the referee. Referee telling you first and five again. Split back. Pitch to Gwillen Jones. He stopped for no gain right at the 40-yard line. That's the quick pitch that they scored the touchdown on. That time, Liverpool was ready to defend that. There's some big boys over there on the Liverpool defense. See Tremar Otis trying to get his team going. 
Second and five for the Wildcats. Ryder goes in motion to the top of the screen. And they hand the ball straight ahead to Chris, who makes a nice move, nice gets into ball. Liverpool territory at the 46-yard line. Easily a first down. That play was set up on the, by the play that they ran prior to that, which was the pitch. What they did was they faked the pitch and got everyone going one way, gave it back to Chris going right up the middle. There's the fake of the pitch. You see all the defenders over to the right side. Chris gives a little dipsy doodle, shaking Dave, and then he's hauled down by Shamar Otis and by a number of, of the Liverpool varsity football players. Bill Chris checks out of the game eight carries, 32 yards. They hand the ball straight ahead. Shane Perry may have got a couple. Two yards to be fought for. I think Shane Perry came in to spell Bill Chris just for one play so he could regain his breath. And here comes Chris back into the game now along with Bill Ryder. 9.20 to go, third quarter. And West Genesee, a drive that started at their own 20, now in Liverpool territory at the 44. Conklin sends Ryder in motion. And he hands to Chris. And he gets down to about the 40-yard line. In the first half, it seemed like Willem Jones was the one who was carrying the bulk of the of the rushing for West Genesee. This half, it looks like they're going to rely on senior Bill Chris, who's all, who's a returning football player. He's had the experience that perhaps Willem Jones hasn't had, but Chris is showing that he's going to be very effective going up the middle, and that's right at the strength of the Liverpool defense. Chris Johnson, Brian Bayless on the last stop. But again, linebackers and secondary people making tackles. Here's Chris. He stops short of a first down as he gets to the 38. They have to get to the 36 for a new set of downs. Now again, this is where Hugo might play an influential part. I don't know if Coach Carruthers might go for it if he didn't have it, but I think he's going to go for it now because he is going to be into that wind. And you can see this is just a, a straight dive right off tackle, running right behind Tom Barry and Brian Bell. And he's close to a first down, but up, I'd say about two yards. Ed, two yards? Fourth and two. Ryder in motion. Liverpool man jump, but he was not offside. Chris, it looks like he may be well, right at the sticks. We'll wait and see. They Liverpool see defense over. saying that they have stopped him. Shamar Otis like that. Shamar is very, very energetic, very enthusiastic out there. Gets, gets everybody going. Looks like you can always be counting on for good whack of encouragement. Official timeout for a measurement. From our vantage point, it does not seem like they have the first down, but we'll wait for the measurement. And again, as I said earlier, that was Chris, who was carrying the bulk of the running, running the same play, which is a straight dive play with uh, trap blocking. That particular time, as you said so eloquently, the defensive line came up and made a stellar defensive stand. This is something that, again, will switch over to the offense. A lot of times, coaches like to go for a big play after their defense has come up with a big play. So the Warriors take over on downs, and Matt McPhee pitches back to Antuna, and he's got running room. He cuts to the outside, and he's off to the races. There's his sprinter speed. He may be gone. Five touchdowns. No flag. 63 yards. Jamel Antuna, that'll put him over 100 for the game, his second touchdown of the night. And plays don't get much bigger than that, do they? <laughs> Liverpool now up 13 to 10. And Brian Tenshaw is in the game to try to add a point. Again, remember, Brian's going to be kicking with the wind. So this one should start sailing and just keep going for a while. 
McPhee the holder. It is good. Warriors on one play, 63 yards by Jamel Antuna. Take a 14 to 10 lead. And as I said, right after a big defensive stand, you've got momentum on your side. And the offense picked up on the, the flavor of the game that the defense had set and ran a quick off tackle play, gave it to one of their best backs, one of the best backs in the league, it looks like. He gets a great kick out block by his lead back. And there, now all it is, is who's got the speed. And Antuna said, it belongs to me. As you see, he just gets right outside of the outreach hand of the West Tennessee defender and only has his linebacker chasing him now. And hey, Joe, this is six points for you and also for your Liverpool Warriors as you're up by four points, 14 to 10, 7.30 left in the third quarter. So the old momentum change comes back to Liverpool's side. Oh, Mo. I, I, I swear by it after so many years of football myself. I, I have seen it, it. Football is such an emotional sport. And let's not be fooled. No matter what the age, it's a game of war. And momentum swings in those types of things at uh, the energy level. Ten shot a kickoff. Chris watches it sail over his head and out of the end zone. And with that wind, why not just tee it up and nail it out? Oh, sure. I, I'd have watched it, too. I'd have been right back there. Had the best seat in the house for watching that kick. Now it's important for West Genesee to mount the drive like they did initially. To at least be able to get something going so that they can, again, try to get momentum back to their side. You can bet that Liverpool defense is going to be sky high, and they're going to be looking for Bill Christ on the inside running game. Let's see if they're going to try, if West Genesee tries to go outside now. They have Chris and Perry in the backfield behind, Con behind Conklin, and they send a man in motion, and they give it to Chris. He gets outside, well, tried to get outside. He was hit by a linebacker, got about three. That was... Be Number 75, John Perugini on the stop. You can see again, this is a right off tackle. This is a play that they've been running earlier with some effectiveness. Coach, Coach Mangicaro has told his defensive tackles they've got to play a little tougher up there and watch the trap blocking. That's exactly what they did that play. Let's see if West Kenny tries to go outside. Second and seven, they give to Chris again. He's been a workhorse in this half. Penalty flag down in the backfield. Chris did pick up enough yardage for the first down, but let's see what the flag is. It's against West Genesee, the preliminary indication. Can at times be the biggest drive killer known to man. Has got to be those holding penalties when you're especially starting a drive. Chris just had a very nice run there, about seven, seven yards, and it was going to be close to a first down. Down, bringing up a, it would have brought up a third to short yardage situation, and now with the holding penalty, you're bringing it back. But a lot of times, what you have to understand too is that the holding is usually in at the point of attack. Hold, white, repeat, second down. And at the point of attack is that's why probably the run was so effective. They repeat second down, however, they repeat it from the 12-yard line, second and 18. Conklin, little quarterback draw. Gets about five or six on the play, up to about the 18-yard line. That's a safe play. You don't have to make a handoff on that particular play. And also what you're doing is you're knowing that your defensive linemen are going to be coming up really hard. And you can see from our end zone camera, he's dropping straight back and he makes a nice read, goes off to the left, but there wasn't a lot of running room there. Picked up about four or five yards on that play. They're going to need to take a lot more now with third and about 12. Shamar Otis was trying to stir up the crowd here, and a nice crowd despite the Rolling Stones and Hugo on this night. Little pass outside, and he threw it to Bill Sullivan, but again led him a little too far, and West Genesee will have to punt. Liverpool's in a man-to-man -man defense, and on a man-to-man -man defense, what that does is 
it allows you not to get caught up in the flow. You can see your quarterback Conklin's going one way and he's throwing back. But while you're in a man's man as opposed to a zone, you're not looking at the flow, you're running with the man. It's a very tough throw, especially into what's got to be, I would estimate, a 20 mile an hour win. I don't know knots at all or any of that stuff. Quillen Jones to punt, Antuna and Bayless back to get it, almost snapped it over his head. He got it off, but again, off the side of his foot, and it rolls back towards the West Genesee end zone. Jones picked it up, and we'll have to see how the referee sorts this out. What happened on that play was after the bad punt, Jamel Antuna, and a lot of times when a football player sees the ball on the ground, he feels, I've got to go get it. Jamel dove on the football, but he really didn't have to, and when he did, he caused a fumble, and the ball should become West Genesee's football now because Liverpool had the football, and then West Jenny recovered it. However, they give it to Liverpool at the 17-yard line. Well, I, I certainly don't understand that. If they ruled it a fumble, because the ball was live once it's kicked. No question, a Liverpool man was on the ball and scored it loose, and Jones picked it up. But here's Liverpool, first and ten, and Bayless gets the ball, got a big haul, and he's down inside the ten. Uh, this is a very crucial point for the West Genesee team. They've got, they've got to come up with a turnover again. I'd like to, we're going to take a look at the punt one more time, just because what's happened here is once the ball is punted, it is only you can only down it or pick the ball up and run. Now. Right now, if the ball can be picked up, you can see a Liverpool player has touched the football. The ball is a live football, and then the West Genesee player picks the ball up. I perhaps I'm wrong. I can't. I wouldn't understand the ruling why it wouldn't be a fumble. Would it, would it be left. anything uh, that it wasn't past the uh, line of scrimmage? That's right. That's and that's a po that's a possibility that because the ball didn't go past the line of scrimmage, it wouldn't be considered a live football. But that that's the only possibility. But again, I think that um, the, the stripes know what they're doing, and they've given the ball to Liverpool, and now it's just time to play football. 5-16 to 16 to go in the third quarter, and Liverpool holding on to a 14-10 to 10 lead, actually trying to add to it here as they're inside the 10. The way the game started out, Ed, I had the feeling that Liverpool was going to be on a roll. They were running the ball so effectively, and West Jenny just came back with so much heart and seemed to really quench the crowd as well as Liverpool's desire. And now, all of a sudden, with this big change of events, Liverpool can be adding their second score of this half. Second and three. Hendry to the far side of the field. They hand it straight ahead to Antuna and he's popped pretty well. That's called the middle of the line and you can see 66 and 52. The Talis 66, Brian Bell 52 on the stop. And both of those big jumps. Look at them. Look at the penetration by there you go. That's penetration getting in there. Beating the blocks of the, of the Liverpool counterpart and getting inside Side, shooting the gap. Now, what they can't do, is, or I shouldn't say can't do, or what they're not doing is they're not going head on. The West Jenny guys, now we've got a stack defense. Man up Third and five. Here's Antuna. He's got some running room and he's in for the score. Dove over at the last moment. And Liverpool goes up on top by a score of 20 to 10. His third touchdown of the night, this one from 10 yards out. When you're, when you're running a stack defense and you're picking a gap, that means you're making penetration. Once you make penetration, if you're getting trap blocked, that means that alignment is coming from either angle, and he's got an angle to push you at. If you've guessed wrong, well, then you've got six points like Mr. Antuna just scored. And he just went past his yardage of last week. He had 132 against Nottingham. He's up to 140, and we still got 434 in the third. Henshaw with the extra point. Liverpool leading by a score of 21 to 10. They were down 10-7 at the half. West Tennessee needs to regroup. 
they're going to stay in their game plan. I know I know Coach Carruthers is, is quite stable as far as uh, telling his team, don't worry about it. We can come back. We've done, we've done it before. We can do it now. What they have to do now, though, they can't wait. Being down by 11 points, it's no time to just say, okay, fourth quarter, we're going to go get it. Here's another look at the TD by Antuna, his third. You can see this is just this is a power play. They've got two backs right in front. Look at the drive blocking. Beautiful block by Brian Bayless. I know Brian wants to make sure. He says, Jamel, did you see that on TV? Did you see me throw a block for you? Backs are always talking like that to each other. I threw a great block for you, buddy. She gives me the six points. Ten shot to kick it off again. Oh, here he He's hit two out of the end zone in this half. He gets this one up in the air, and this will be playable. Or will it? Joe Dell caught it about the goal line and went in for the touchback. So West Jenny will take the ball at their own 20-yard line. With 4.34 left, and the Wildcats are down by 11. One question, Ken. you got 16 and a half minutes of football to play. You don't throw the ball an awful lot. You know, you can't have a lot of ball control here. you got to get a couple of scores. Right now, because they've got a 20-mile-an-hour headwind, don't look for anything over 10 yards if they're going to throw the ball. Bill Christ was doing an effective job. I believe what West Tennessee will do is they'll try to stick with their game plan, run the ball effectively, because even though it is, it's, it's late in the third quarter, there's still plenty of time. Ryder in motion. Will and Jones gets the pitch and gets about six yards. Kristen Jones pretty much carrying the load here tonight. They've had other blacks in there, but you're right. It's, it's been Kristen Jones taking turns from our end zone camera. You see that's a quick pitch. The ends are already out there. The defensive ends turned the play in. McGowan just took what was there and ran for about, rambled for about six, seven yards. He's carried seven times tonight for 61 yards. Penalty flag. And perhaps that was too much time. And not what the Wildcats need if it is. But it isn't. Uh, to call offsides against the defense at that particular time, someone had to come across and touch an offensive lineman. Dead ball. Trojan. Blue. Encroachment. When I was in high school, that was the biggest word I knew. Encroachment. And I played football from seventh grade. I'd say it was probably my junior year in high school. I finally figured out what it meant. It means that you cannot go across and touch one of the offensive linemen. Once you do that and he has a move, that's five-yard penalty. It was a first down as well. Chris gets the ball and he gets a couple of yards to about the 33. Uh, earlier you posed an interesting question about what kind of game plan are they going to have seeing the time is ticking down and especially going into the win. Come fourth quarter, the thing that is positive for West Jenny is that they will have the win the whole fourth quarter. They've got an outstanding kicker in Licamelli, and they also, they also have a lot of weapons. They run what's called a waggle, which is faking the ball to Chris and throwing it to the ends coming across. This is number 48, Dave Musamishi. 48, Dave Musamishi on the carry. He got a couple up to about the 35-yard line. It'll bring up third and six. And a couple, it'll be third and six. Uh, this is a tough. This is a tough play decision here. Do you throw the ball and then have to go back and punt it again, or do you run the ball hoping to get? Maybe a fourth and one, and then say, okay, this is the game, fellas. What, we, what are we going to do? No question they need a big play because if you give it back to the Liverpool offense, it's ball control, and that eats up the time. They pitch to Jones, and he's got room down the sideline. He's got a first down. Big play right there. That, that was a very big play for the West Jenny supporters. They needed that first down, and they did. They got it. This is the quick pitch that they scored the touchdown on. You can see they got Kelsey out there. They got that big 7-5 out there in front of you, and what they did was they turned the corner. Once you can get a defensive end that hasn't turned the play inside, you've got lots of running room because the next player that's going to come up to meet you is usually going to be a defensive halfback. Jones now 71 yards on the night. Big hit inside. 
That was a ooh hit. That was a ooh. You we heard it hear, here in the press yeah, box. Yeah, you could hear it. I, I tried to keep myself from saying ooh. This is this is the we're going to try and fool them and just run it straight dive. And you can see the, the the trap coming there, and he missed the trap lock. And Chris Johnson just hits him in the chest, and that's a ooh boy. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Jared. That was Jared Fry. Jared, good hit, buddy. Being a defensive back, I, I kind of kind of partial to defense. Second and eleven. Jones in motion, and he gets the ball. And he's got some room. And if he gets to the outside, he's got more room. And he does. And he's driven out of bounds at about the thirty-seven yard line of Liverpool. This is not this is not a team. This Liverpool team is not a team that you're going to outrun quite often. You're going to take what's there. That time, Jones showed that he has speed to run with these guys from Liverpool that are all these track stars. You see, this is. This is just an inside handoff. He was coming in motion. We haven't seen this play yet. And now he's getting to the outside. And look at him turn the corner. And ridden out of bounds here by Bayless and David Sezniak. 17 yards on the play for Jones. And he's closing in on 100 for the night. Sticking with their game plan. And it's working for Coach Brothers and the West Jenny Wildcats. Conklin going to pass. He's got a man. And again, just let him a little too far. He's done that a few times tonight. It's a tough pattern. Um, right there, right there, it's something that I'm sure Scott wished he could get that pass back because it's going to be a situation like you were saying, when you have the win, where you, there's, you're going to want to make this. Now he's got plenty of time this time. And he sets up and shoots the ball out there for his wide receiver. And Sullivan was nowhere near the ball because the ball was nowhere near him. The ball is at the 38-yard line of Liverpool. 121 to go, third quarter. The Warriors lead by 11. Dell in motion. They hand it to Jones. He just got a couple to the 36. It'll bring up third and eight. Liverpool's defense, a well-coached defense, is whenever they see, now whenever they see Jones with that little extra split, what you noticed when they ran for the touchdown, they're defending. Now watch the defensive end coming hard across there. You see the defensive end, that's Iverson, making a good play and coming back in to help out. What you have to do is you've got to turn that in. That's Iverson and Otis's job there. Another big third down play for the Wildcats. And Chris gets the handoff. And he's got room, and he's got a first down. And he's all the way down to the Liverpool 21-yard line. Your heart's got to be in your stomach when you're Coach Carruthers and you say, okay, I've got third and seven, I've got third and eight, and I'm running the ball, and I'm not doing anything fancy. And we're picking it up. That's a lot of heart shown by these by these kids at, by these kids at West Tennessee. Here's from our ground camera. You can see Chris. Now watch Chris give the inside cut, running right and back at Darren McLaren's block, picking up enough for the first down, and the drive goes on. And again, Sesniak on the stop, but again, a guy in the secondary making a stop. Big third down conversion right there. Jones in motion, and he gets the ball. And he's inside the 20 to about the 18, so he picked up three. When I was in college, we ran an offense similar to what they're running here when they run the gentleman in motion. That's called, uh, from a wing T type of offense. You put someone in motion, and you can run scissor plays off of that and things along that line. I wouldn't be surprised to see someone like a Joe Dell come in the game and run something like a reverse or something uh, with this hot pursuing Liverpool defense. Third quarter is in the books. 12 minutes to play, and West Jenny trying to come back from 11 points down. We'll be back in a moment. Onondaga Sports Medicine and Rehabilitation Center is dedicated to the safe and speedy recovery of all athletes from a sports-related injury. Our staff of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists specialize in the evaluation and treatment of athletic injuries and orthopedic conditions. Our facility is outfitted with the latest and most advanced therapeutic and conditioning equipment. If you've been sidelined by an athletic injury and you're serious about returning to an active lifestyle, take advantage of Onondaga Sports Medicine. Executive Director, Don Lowe. When friends don't stop friends from drinking and driving.
friends die from drinking and driving. Friends die from drinking and drinking and driving can kill a friendship. One quarter to play. Liverpool leading 21 to 10, but West Genesee driving to get a little closer. And this drive started on the 20, and they've had a couple of big third down conversions. And as we saw, this has only taken four minutes. So if they punch the ball in now, then and kick the and we're taking for granted that they would kick the extra point. Then we're talking about a four-point game. They've got to come back and score again. The key will be: can they stop Liverpool? And can they maintain a drive again? But if they do maintain a drive, we know that from what they've shown us, it's probably going to be on the ground. But obviously the first thing they have to do is they have to take care of this business, which is getting the ball in the end zone now. And I would imagine if they do score here, Carruthers will probably go for the two. He's got Licamelli as a field goal kicker, can always tie it. That's exactly right. Because if four points, five points, it's not a big difference because what, we, what we're talking about is a touchdown is six points in American Rules football. West Jenny will come up to the ball second and eight at the Liverpool 18-yard line. There'll be nothing fancy here. Bill Crist and Gwillen Jones have carried the load tonight between the two. 25 carries for 161 yards. Riders in motion. It appears Liverpool's offside. I believe Tom Watts, number 50, jumped off. And that's the call. You've got good eyes for an older person. Well, that ball, Grossman, move. Outside the Denver Warriors, it'll be second and three. Let's remember one other thing, too. West Tennessee has the win. And I know we're probably kind of redundant, but there is a, a hefty wind that's been blowing. Second and three after the penalty. Jones in motion. And Jones gets the ball. And he's down inside the 10-yard line. And that's enough for a first down. You have to admire West Genesee's heart here because they, another team could have easily folded and just given up the game, especially after that botched punt. You can see it's an inside handoff again, a little face mask perhaps, but first down, Quillen Jones keeping the legs moving. And you can tell when perhaps he's going to get the football because he goes in motion, he bellies just a little wider than normal. Let's watch the backs this play. Jones and Chris. It's Chris. He's got some room. He's down to the six. Nice tackle by Chris Johnson, the middle linebacker. Chris Johnson, a return, another returning. Seat, uh, he's a junior, six foot, 172 pounds, had five tackles last week. The thing I like about Bill Chris is that Bill gets to a certain point, then he squares his shoulders, and that's where he gets his strength. And look, he takes three steps. That's leg drive. Second and goal from the six. Tough place to score from that they started at the nine yard line. Very split in the backfield. Maybe a quick pitch. Here's the touchdown play before, and it works again. Willen Jones goes over from six yards out. And uh, hold on, folks, because West Genesee's right back in this one. 21-16, and now we'll see if they go for the two or they kick the point. Split in the backfield. They, um, they went for the quick pitch, and like you said, that's what they scored before, Ron. And now, all of a sudden, we got a ball game. And everyone's probably wondering, why did they go up and look like they were going to kick again? What they try to look for is they try to look for an imbalance of the Liverpool players, if there's enough players over there to respect them, because the kid over the center will just take it and run the option. And they will go for two. Conklin fumbles the ball, and now he just throws it in desperation. So the score will remain 21 to 16, and now West Jenny needs a touchdown to overtake Liverpool. Now, from West Tennessee's standpoint, they've seen that it's only taken them six minutes to get the ball in. 
The key now is going to be if West Tennessee's defense can hold the powerful Liverpool offense. Because Liverpool has shown that on any given play, with Bayless and with Antuna, they can go in and score. Here's the touchdown once again, and it's a replay of what we saw at the end of the first half, the touchdown. Wide split, because Jones is trying to get that extra thing to the out, get that extra step to the outside. He picked up a great block by Jim Kelsey, who just sealed the defensive end, and that was the key, and that's why the score is now 21-16. to Jones' second touchdown of the night. He's over 100 yards with that run, 101. And let's give credit to these other offensive linemen. You've got David Schneid, who's been playing well. Darren McLaren's been coming up and hitting, hitting people on that offensive line, too. These are the guys who don't get all the credit, but if it wasn't for them blocking... These other guys wouldn't have a chance to run with the football as effectively as they have. Nick Licamelli with a big wind at his back. And we'll see what he does with it. He's not going to do anything. The ball fell off the tee. <laughs> but you had it set up nice. I like that, Ed. We try. 11.03 to play, and it's a five-point game with Liverpool on top. The wind seems to have died down a little bit now. He puts a good foot into this one, and Bayless just watches it go into the end zone. It'll be a touchback for the Warriors. They'll take over on their own 20 yard line first and pass. Well, you run a wishbone and you have a lot of ball control, and that's exactly what the Warriors need right now if they want to hang on. That's exactly right. What West Genesee has to do now is hope that they can just stop them. There's no need to come up with a big play. All you have to do is play sound defense. However, as you just uh, just stated, Liverpool has been running the ball quite effectively. So this is going to be an interesting test for both teams. McPhee gives to Antuna. He's got a lot of room. He's over to the 30, up to the 34-yard line for a gain of 14. Antuna gives you that Roger Craig type of look once he gets out in the open. He has the high knees going. I mean, he looks like he's got a little, he looks like he's got a, either a calf or a sprain. The pitch went off his face mask, and you see him just, he gets a great block, the great block there on Perry. There's Manipole coming all the way from his middle linebacker position to track him down and make the tackle. That's a great play by Rob Manipole. Rob had to run about 20 yards just to get way out there to make the tackle. But the key was the point of attack right at the defensive end, and he picked up an outstanding block there. And then after that, it was just taking the ball downfield. There is a player down. That's not Antuna. He's hobbling off the field right now. Uh, we couldn't see the number of the player. We'll get it to you as soon as we can. Antuna right now with 154 yards on the night and three scores. There he is. He's, 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 limping. he's limping like he like he wants to come back and just work it out. If you get those little springs, I tell you, what, it's very, very difficult to get over that initial pain period. But what you what you usually find ball players doing is they start walking. There's Darren McLaren who's going off the field there. It looks like he had a similar situation. Both guys, both guys playing hard for their prospective teams. Hopefully, they'll both be back. First and ten from the 34 for Liverpool. And they give to Howard inside. He looked for some room, and he got about three. Tough running inside by Stan Howard. Stan doesn't carry the ball often, but when he does, it's almost like throwing throwing a, a fastball. You're setting you're setting the defense up with the Stan Howard, keeping him honest, making sure that those defensive tackles, Brian Bell, Vitalis, and Byrne, that those gentlemen will respect the inside run so they don't get a chance to pursue. Now look at how close look how close the West Jenny guys are now. They're coming. Bayless, the pitch. Big hole. Nice open field tackle by Chris. Every time people have come Bill Chris way, he's put him down. He makes great open field tackles. Now watch on this particular play. Look how stacked up the West Genesee gentlemen are. They're so close to the line. They get a quick trap block, and Bayless had tons of running room, but Bill Chris came up and made a great open field tackle. One of the toughest things in football to do. You're talking about a guy who's carried the ball 14 times tonight. We're... Uh 
almost midway through the fourth quarter. He's coming to make a defensive play like that. Pitch was a little high. Bayless did a nice job to even catch the ball and may have gotten a first down. It's going to be very close. And that was, again, Chris coming up and making a tackle. Billy Chris has been playing his heart out here today. Without a measurement, the official signals first down, and Jim Kelsey, who we called a few times on the quarterback sack, he questioned it a little. Again, the ball, the ball you, as you stated, was a bad pitch, went up, and Chris comes up and makes a tackle. You see Bayless reaching out. you got to be careful doing that because that's where a lot of fumbles come from. McPhee heads to Antuna, who's back in the game, and he's off to the races once again. He's down to about the West Genesee 41-yard line for another first down. That ankle seemed to get better real quick. He still got a little, he still got a little limp in there, but that's what you call a competitor. When it's time, when it's time to play, he goes out there and plays football as hard as he can. How many times have you seen a player a little hobble but hand him the ball and he's off? There you go. And look, it look, doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with that stride. Just running over his own player and getting the most out of that particular play. Here's Bayless. A West Genesee defender in the pile tried to steal the ball from him to no avail. Now, if you notice, we've seen the exact same play perhaps four or five times. All it is is they're pitching the ball, but they're not going outside. They're having two blockers. The two backs are in the backfield. Howard and either Bayless and Antuna are taking turns running the football. They're running power football, but all it is is with a quick pitch. Second and five for the Warriors. And Antuna gets the ball, and he's fighting and fighting, and he'll be just short of a first down, it appears. And that play was set up by the play before, where they fake the pitch out and then give it back going the other way, hoping that the West Genesee gentlemen have over-pursued. On that particular time, West Jenny stayed at home, made a good defensive play, but not after Antuna picked up about, five, about four or five yards. A week ago against Nottingham, Liverpool picked up 235 yards on the ground. And right now, they're, they're just about at that figure, maybe a little over it. Antuna carrying much of the load with 173 yards. A whole lot of running. Third and one. Big play right here for the defense. Antuna's got a first down and much, much more. He's inside the 25. And you can tell when things aren't going the way you want on defense. When your defensive backs, when, you're, when you have your Billy Chris and your Scott Conklins are coming up and making tackles and making four or five tackles on a drive. This is just, this play is just another quick little pitch. It's designed to go off tackle. Look at the size of that hole. There's Conklin coming up and making a great tackle. But unfortunately, these, tack these great tackles are happening eight, nine yards downfield. Bayless, tackled by number 55, Rob Manifold, and number 33, Bill Chris. But again, it's been Bayless one way and Tuna the other way, and they've put together an impressive drive that's eaten up some of the clock, and they score here, and West Jenny's in trouble. Running behind, the side, running behind big boys like Robert Bimson, Tom Watts, Kevin Cordell, John Portney, and John Perigini. Yeah, you've got, you've got some horses up there. I mean, Bimson, 6'2", 230. Second and five. Bayless once again. Nice tackle by Conklin. Saved the first down. Same play we've seen. The pitch, the two black, the two backs blocking up front. There's the there's the hole off the corner. Except for the safety comes up and makes a great play. And that's Scott Conklin, who's also the quarterback. And that time, Scott, you didn't tackle like a quarterback. You look like a safety, buddy. And he's up very close now. He's maybe four yards off the ball. Another big play for the defense. Manifold had a hold of Antuna, but then that slowed him down, and the rest of the Wildcats showed up. He's short of a first down. So now here's the decision. 
the kick the field goal into the wind, even though you've got a great kicker, and if you can hear in the background, that's that's the booth with the wind just blowing up against the plexiglass. Or do you go with what you what you what you say, dance with who brung you, and that's Antuna and Bayless, and try to run the ball as as West Tennessee did when they were running into the wind. Henshaw's on the sidelines and. Liverpool's going to go for it on fourth and four. They run the option. And how many times have we called, called Jim Kelsey's name for a big defensive play tonight? And that time he comes up and grabs McPhee, throws him down, and West Tennessee gets the ball with 5.33 to play. Effective effective drive from the standpoint they took time off the clock, but now West Denny has the ball. Here's the option coming off tackle. Kelsey tackles, stops Dan Howard, and then when he sees Howard doesn't have the ball, goes off and grabs McPhee before McPhee can pitch the ball to the dangerous Brian Bayless. So that is the big play that West Tennessee needed. Five minutes. That's about how long it took them to drive the last time. Let's see. They need a touchdown. They're down by five. Penalty marker down as Jones goes outside, and he may go a long way. He's tackled at the 40-yard line, so we'll have to see about the marker. And there's two flags. There's a flag down on this side, on the poor side, and right in front of West Denny, there was another late flag that went down during the course of the run. Now, in the case that there's two penalties on one team, the team has the team that has the penalties um, has the choice can pick the greater penalty. So, for example, if there is a holding and an offside, you would take the holding because the holding would be a ten-yard penalty, as opposed to the offside, which would just be a five-yard penalty. But they're sorting it out down there and talking to the captain, who's the middle linebacker. Why, how come safeties are never the captains? They always make the middle linebackers the captain. I always wanted to be the captain. They always made these other guys captain. But I guess, you know, with Chris Johnson being such a good hitter, I'd probably say, okay, Chris, you can, you can be the captain. Clearly against West Genesee here. We'll just have to wait for the call. They're, sort, they're sorting things out here. Looks like five yards. We had motion on white. We had a clip on white. White choose to accept the motion penalty. First and ten. Now, the, the reason they took the motion penalty was because the motion penalty came from the line of scrimmage. The clip penalty, which was further downfield, would have taken place at the spot of the infraction, and that's why they chose that penalty. Conklin to pass. He's got a man. Almost intercepted, then almost caught by Darren McLaren. Intercepted for Darren McLaren. Now Conklin looked a lot better on that. He's set up, and he's also he's also got a big wind in back of him. You see, Conklin's got plenty of time. Good protection. Otis gets there right as he releases the ball. It goes off of I think that's Bayless's hands off from McLaren's hands. It almost looked like a little volleyball thing going on out there. Fans here in Liverpool starting to scurry around as remnants of Hugo finally show up with 4.59 to play in the game, and Conklin's back to pass. He throws over the middle and overshot his man, Joe Dell, at about the 40-yard line. Interesting thing about that last play, Ed, is that he looked at Joe Dell, and Joe Dell drew a lot of coverage, but going down the sideline without anyone seeing him was Darren McLaren. Look for Wes Jenny to come back with the same play and then to look down the sideline and look to throw the ball to McLaren. Have you done anything to prepare for Hugo? You um, boarded up your windows or anything like that? No. Put your I haven't been home today, so uh, put your Hugo away or something. <laughs> called the neighbors and said, "Please uh, look at the house. Make sure it's standing when I get home." Today's football is such a tough game. Day goes on through hurricanes, through stiff winds. We were expecting some sheets of rain, which haven't, which have not come yet, and. We're praying that they don't come because this has been an excellent football game and we don't want to see it marred by slush. You can see the West Tennessee sideline there. And there's the Liverpool sideline. The coach is, the coach is trying to make sure that everyone knows the crowd. Okay, you can hear him yelling at Antuna to back up, to back up. 
This could be the ball game right here. Third and 15, and they pitch it to Jones. He's got nowhere to go outside. He's hit by a host of people, including Chris Johnson. Antuna was there to turn it back in. And now they're faced with a fourth down, and it looks like they're going to send in. Look at Melly's coming in the game. Well, that would be about a 90-yard field goal. I don't care what kind of wind you got. <laughs> you'd, you'd really need a little bit of a stiff wind there. I, I, I wonder what they're going to do. I wonder if Lick and Melly's going to hand some of the punting chores here. Well, he's just lined up on the outside of the line. Well, certainly this is a great place for a fake. They got Chris back punting, not Jones. And Chris does punt it. Lands at the 48, takes a West Genesee bounce, and Licamelli will be on top of it to down it at the 35. Three fifty-seven to go. Liverpool has the ball and a five-point lead at 21-16. And again, the key of that particular drive had to be that first down play where they picked up 17 yards and they had to call the play back and not then you don't have the ball at the 40 yard line instead of having it there you have the ball at the 15 yard line and instead of it being first and 10 it's first and 15 and that was unfortunate from West Tennessee side and I jinxed us because look at what it's doing out there it's starting to rain I'm sorry Ed that's okay we're inside and there goes Antuna outside down the sideline into West Genesee territory at the 49-yard line, a first down. And he'll go over 200 yards with that run. If there's any hope for West Genesee now, they have got to stop Mr. Antuna. And you can see he likes to carry the football. He's just got a host of people out there blocking for him. And McLaren says, that's enough. After 15 yards, i got to knock you out of bounds. I I'm very impressed with Antuna. He looks just like what you would call clichéishly a a classic runner, a natural. And the classic run is all going to be called back on a penalty. So wipe out the play, and we'll see what the penalty is all about. Blue holes. Repeat first down. It was definitely after Antuna had gotten downfield a bit because right now on, on the hold they only tacked oh, off two up, yards from the original out. line of scrimmage. And now Liverpool is calling timeout. It'll be first and 12 when the Warriors take the ball again. I'm sure uh, Coach Mancicaro didn't want a timeout at that particular at that particular time. They always want to save your timeouts because you never know what might happen. And if for if for uh, some reason there's a turnover and West Tennessee were to score, you want to have as many timeouts as you possibly can have. On the night, Antunas carried the ball 21 times for 183 yards. Yes! Bayless 13 times for 54 yes! yards. <laughs> And Howard inside six times for 17 yards. Not bad. That's not bad. Mr. Antuna came from, came from Watertown. I understand. I understand. He was sort of just an unassuming guy, not not knowing a lot of people around here. They just saw this new kid come out for the team, and next thing you know, you've got a starter on a team that in 1987 was uh, number one in New York State. I think that's a that's a heck of an accomplishment. And I'm sure Coach Manager Carroll is very happy to have him with the Warriors. So first and a dozen, and the wishbone behind Matt McPhee. Hands to Antuna inside, gets just a couple up to about the 35-yard line. There's the, there's the Liverpool Warrior. He's over there doing the Warrior thing, but he's hanging out with his friends too, you know. It's like I'm warrioring, but I'm talking to my boys. The Warrior trying to break an eight-game unbeaten streak by the Wildcats. Both teams 1-0 and coming into this game. West Jenny has everyone up on the line looking to stop the run. And Tuna gets the pitch again, gets outside. 
and gets about five before number 53, David Schneid is there for the stop. Number 87, Darren McLaren there as well. Oh, when you look, as I said before, you look at the Warriors' offensive line, they've got 221, 202, 230, they've got a tight end, 221. And then you look at the defensive line for West Jenny, you've got a 175-pounder, another 170-pound tackle. It's tough for these 170 guys to go head-to-head -head with these big boys for four quarters. Third and four with 219 to play. Pitch to Antuna. He's got a first down. Conklin is the only man to beat. Scotty couldn't hold on to him, and he's gone. Fourth touchdown tonight. He's well over 200 yards. 60 yards on the play, and that pretty much will do it. Well, like I said, Joe Mel Antuna came from Watertown and was unassuming, and no one knew who he was. I bet you there's going to be a lot of people who are going to know who he is Monday at school. You can see the wind just blowing everyone's hair down there. A couple of stories in the newspaper about Antuna this week, and well-deserved. He's a great back. And, and also, it seems like an outstanding young man. Twenty-four carries for two hundred and fifty-one yards. That's uh, that's a good day at the good day at the office. Ooh, into the wind. Tenshaw's kick is good. More importantly than the yards and the carries, he put twenty-four points on the board, and he showed that speed. I I talked to I talked to um, my brother Calvin Chase, who works as, as a uh, baseball coach in Liverpool, and he said Bayless is an outstanding sprinter, and he said at practice, Jomel has beaten him at practice uh, in in sprints. So that pat so on the head from uh, just about everybody on the team, a well deserved. Now there's just the short pitch again. They're kicking out the end. They're not running outside he just out he just lunges over McLaren and now it's a foot race and look at the stride look at the stride Conklin's coming over Conklin's got him by the jersey but just can't hold on to him and now Chris coming all the way from on the other side of the field but it's a little too little a little too late that's just about the nail in the coffin here 28-16 Liverpool with 204 to play <laughs> Chris and Dell to receive the kickoff, which will be into the win, and they'll really have to make something happen on this play. Well, this is this is the time to try to take it all the way back. It's Chris at the ten. Got it back to about the twenty-two. Number 62, Kevin Cordell in on the tackle. This is the time where Conklin has got, they've got to throw the ball now, even though that's perhaps not in their game plan. But right now, they've got to throw the ball. I'd say look for Darren McLaren going down the sideline with perhaps um, Ryder going towards the middle and trying to hit one of those two gentlemen. Conklin does throw over the middle, caught by McLaren. He's got some running room, but he's taken down at the 30-yard line. A gain of eight. From a Liverpool standpoint, you don't mind that. You, you'll, give, you'll give them that all day long because eight yards here, eight yards there is not going to win the game. Yeah, Chris Johnson coming up the middle on a blitz at this point in the game. And then there's a great open field tackle. By little, by little David Sesniak. Dave must have some speed, too. I've seen him leg a few people down running all over that place. There's Chris Johnson in there again. New quarterback in for West Genesee, Jim Dalterio. It's tough to throw when you have a, when you have a guy like Johnson, middle linebacker, all over you. You know, middle linebackers, they grunt and they, they're yelling at you while they're tackling. They, can, they just don't want to tackle you. they got to pick you up and grind you into the ground and everything. That's, that's scary when you're just coming into the game. There's Iverson coming in and Shamar Otis going out. 
Could get a well-deserved rest playing both ways tonight. Stan Howard's in there playing a little defensive end now. Chris gets the ball, and he's got some room. He's up over midfield into Liverpool territory at the 49-yard line with 58 seconds to play. I don't care what you say, this West Genesee team has not quit at all. If there was more time left on the clock, they'd still be coming at you and coming after you. Here comes Chris. Chris with plenty of room. This kid has played his heart out here today. Picked up about 15 yards on that run. Del Terrio throwing. He'll overthrow. Antuna almost had an interception. Why not? 251 yards, four touchdowns. Why not add one of those? Oh, that, would, that, would have been, that would have been too much. I think he wouldn't have had enough room in the box score to put everything in that he did. Stops the clock. And you can see how the ball took off there. He, it was just a little it was just a little wrist pass, and that ball, that ball went about 30 yards downfield. Liverpool's next opponent is going to ask if they want to take him back up to Watertown to visit some old friends that night. <laughs> Del Terrio in trouble. Oh, good job. Gets it away. Caught by McLaren. He's still running. He's down to the 32-yard line with 33 seconds to play. Okay, McLaren should have tried to get out of bounds there to give his team a chance to go at it. He's a junior. I'm sure by next year he's going to know I get the ball in the fourth quarter. I, I run out of bounds with it. That was a, that was a good job by the quarterback to, to get away from everybody. See a little bit of a wobbly pass. He stays with it, though. That's concentration. But he's brought down. Del Terrio throws again. No one out there this time. Del Terrio's got a, a host of people around him, and this is a very tough time for a quarterback because the defensive linemen know you have to throw the ball, and they're, they're just coming right at you. There's Brian Bayless who put in a full night. Oh, yeah, he did. Twenty-four seconds to play. Liverpool, twenty-eight. West Genesee, sixteen. Wind starting to pick up again, but it's not going to have an effect right now. Del Terrio throws, put some zip on the ball. He just nice let Sullivan a little too far. Nice spiral. It, uh, he looks. He looks good. He's a junior, so he'll be back next year. The solo Scott Conklin. That's right. Well, that's true. He's getting some PP, though. Joe Winsell doing a great job with stats and also fixing the plexiglass that's getting ready to fall on top of us. So Thank we don't get Joe. hurt, is that why? That's right. Use what my, a guy. Use Well, it seems just a matter of time now. 16 seconds left to play. And this may be West Genesee's last offensive play of the night. Fourth and ten. The Alterio back to pass. Nice Got catch. McLaren with a nice catch down around the first down marker. Pass is complete. They may have to call for a measurement here. Sets up nice. Nice spiral. It's in the back of McLaren. He makes a great catch. Momentum going one way. Brings it back. Mr. Fry on the tackle. I'll tell you, Jared Fry has had some bone-charring tackles. I'm, I'm getting Jared and Fry and bone-charring and everything. No first no down. No first down. Liverpool takes over, and they'll just run one play, and that'll be it. Turn out the legs. Party's over. I guess the party was over when um, Mr. Antuna took off down the sideline about two, three minutes ago. In your day, you could have caught him, Ed. You could have Absolutely. caught him. Absolutely. <laughs> Not on my best day. 
West Tennessee played a fine ball game. Great ball game. Great ball game. I mean, we're Error free. They made some big plays defense. Kelsey made some great plays defensively. Kelsey played his heart out on offense as well as defense because when they were running a lot of those sweeps that you saw, that you saw um, Golden Jones running, there was it was Kelsey that was opening up the holes. And you got Manipole inside who played well with linebacker. Conklin played well. Uh, they're they're a little smaller, but they they've come to show you that they have got the heart of champions, and that's what they were last year, and that's why they played such a good ball game here. Well, the Warriors came out in the second half and did exactly what they had to do. They were down 10-7 going to intermission, and, and they came right out and scored the first two touchdowns, took the lead, and have not given it back. West Tennessee got close at 21-16. Then Antuna went down the sideline 60 yards, and that was it. And really, when you think about it, the difference in the game is one man, Jamel Antuna, and Antuna taking the ball for big plays. It wasn't that he was just going out and running the ball effectively. He was scoring and coming up big. Well, we got a little time here. Let's run down some numbers. Antuna, 24 carries, 251 yards, and four touchdowns. Brian Bayless, 13 carries for 54 yards. Dan Howard, 6 carries for 17 yards. For West Genesee, Willen Jones, nice night. 14 carries, 104 yards. And complimenting him, Bill Chris, 16 carries, 91 yards. So just shy of 200 on the ground for that tandem. And that's, a, that's a great evening. That's a great evening. Unfortunately, they just came up on the wrong side of, of the 28-16 score. Crowd will count it down from seven seconds. Liverpool will go to 2-0. and West Genesee 1-1. One and one, and the eight-game unbeaten streak is over. So the Warriors win by a dozen, and we'll be back with some final thoughts in just a moment. Longevity is an incredible gift, one that some don't get to enjoy. In upstate New York alone, more than 3,000 kids have cancer, and 195 new cases will be diagnosed this year. Childhood cancer is the number one killer of our kids. One day there'll be a cure, but until then, Camp Good Days and Special Times improves the quality of life for kids with cancer and their families. 315-426-0736. Camp Good Days and Special Times, year-round. When Fran fell, he called for help. But the only ones there were ignorance, incompetence, indifference. Fran called for help again. Confusion came instead. At last, help came. Help knew what to do. In times of emergency, are you help? Learn Red Cross First Aid, where you work, or call your local chapter. We're here at a now rainy Hugo Field with the Onondaga Sports Medicine Player of the Game, Jomel Antuna. Jomel, 251 yards. Ever rushed for that many yards before? No, not really, no. <laughs> excited about it? Yeah, I'm very excited to throw. Was, um, was it a big transition coming from Watertown to Liverpool? Big transition in the offense? Um, yeah, it was, I'm not used to running the option, you know. It's kind of plays. We had sim kind of like simple plays here. It's more like faking and running to the right and flaring to the left, but I got used to it. You, you getting used to the area and being down, being here in Syracuse now? Yeah, I'm getting used to it. It's nice down here. I'm glad I moved. But. 251 yards. You're going to be very popular Monday in school. Congratulations on being the Onondaga Sports Medicine Player of the Game. We're going to be back with Ed, and Ed's going to be with Coach George Manchicaro of the victorious Liverpool Warriors. The power of teaching. The world won't get no better. 
hit my chest. The power to wake up young minds. The power to wake up the world. Teachers have that power. Reach for the power. Teach. We're recruiting young teachers. Call 1-800-35-TEACH. We're back with Liverpool coach George Mangiacaro, and uh, Hugo showed up uh, just in time at the end of the game, but nice outing by your team. Yeah, we play, We really played well the second half. We played well the first half, and uh, basically I told the kids up at halftime that they had to overcome a couple of bad calls that I made. I, I really uh, took almost took us out of the ball game the first half because uh, I tried to throw the ball, and we're not a throwing team. We're a running team, and uh, they did a great job the second half. They came out and did exactly what you want them to do, two touchdowns, third quarter. Well, I think you know we should have had that the first quarter, and that's what we told the kids but you know we were we were going to kick into the wind but we felt maybe uh we wanted to see if we could get them off balance get them deep and uh, score a couple of quick touchdowns unfortunately it worked out that way jamal antuna was written about and talked about all week and he lived up to it tonight well he's coming along i think once he learns our entire system and our offense he's going to be a great football player he's done a lot of good things for us he's a hard worker he's a dedicated football player i think something has to be said about our offensive line west genesee dominated this group of young men last year, uh, Kevin Cordell, Jack Forty, Bob Bimson, and John Pergini and Tom Watts, our front people did a great job of getting that 18 inches that Joe Mel needs, and he doesn't need much more than that. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thanks, we'll be back with a uh, look at the final stats and some final thoughts in just a moment. <laughs> Life is a series of choices, what you eat, how you look, whether you do drugs or not, you know, cocaine, crack. See, only you can decide because the only person responsible is you. Now, if you make the right choice, there's nothing you can't accomplish. If you make the wrong choice, all your other decisions are made for you. Ed Coyle and Ken Chase back at Liverpool. Uh, the Warriors winning tonight 28-16 to over West Genesee, and the weather held out for the game, but not for us <laughs> as we run down the final stats. Liverpool 336 yards all on the ground, and we know who got most of them, 251. That's right, Mr. Antuna, and just a little too much Antuna. I think that was the key to the whole football game, was the fact that Antuna kept Liverpool in certain situations. They had times when they could have gotten down on some of the turnovers that West Genesee got. But what ended up happening was Antuna came back with the big play. And the big play that you usually see in the air, Antuna got on the ground. He's a very welcome addition to that Liverpool Warrior football team. For West Genesee, 271 yards total offense, 216 on the ground. And Jones and Chris doing much of that and running well tonight. Again, let's not take anything away from West Genesee. They came, they played their hearts out. And both of those players, Jones and Chris, played outstanding football games. Again, to be repetitive, it was just too much Antuna. That's all. The big key to the game was that uh, Liverpool was down 10-7 at the half, came right out, two touchdowns, took the lead, never gave it back. That's right. And what ended up happening also was that Liverpool sustained drives. They didn't have the turnovers that cost them so much in the first half, which was also very big. Uh, Liverpool showed that they're going to be a team to be reckoned with uh, for the rest of this coming season. Warriors made some mistakes in the first half and then came out and played error. Free ball in the second half and they got a victory there 2-0 and West Genesee 1-1. One and one. That's right and right now if, with the weather the way it is we're so happy that we're going to be saying goodbye in a little while aren't we? <laughs> but Liverpool was victorious and they played, a, they played a great ball game. Again the final score Liverpool 28 West Genesee West Genesee 16. For Ken Chase I'm Ed Coyle. You've been watching New Channel Sports on Cable 13. Good night everyone.